At this point in our study of Algebra 2, we're going to take a brief detour and start working with things outside of the world of radicals and roots. We're going to be looking at function operations. Now there are four basic operations when it comes to math, there are four basic operations when it comes to functions, and they're denoted as such. If you have, if you have the function or the writing of f plus g of x, then this is going with the fact that we have two functions f and g, and the way it's computed is you find f of x, and then you add to that g of x. Same thing goes with subtraction. If we had f minus g of x, then we take our function f, and we subtract our function g. Sorry, that is g of x for whatever value x is. Now with multiplication, if you have f times g of x, then you take f of x and you multiply that by g of x. And last, our last basic function is division, so f divided by g of x is the function f of x and we're going to divide the function g of x. This one has a restriction though. We have to understand that g of x cannot equal zero. And we're going to look and see when that would have effect. So basic operations, if you're seeing multiple items happening with our functions, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, you just do that with the individual functions themselves. Let's take a look at this. If we're given the fact that f of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 8, and g of x equals x plus 4, we're going to perform the four basic operations with this. So first up, we have f plus g of x. And that simply means that we're going to take x squared plus 6x plus 8, our f of x function, and to that we're going to add x plus 4, our g of x function. So that becomes, combining like terms, x squared plus our 6x, and x can be added together, giving us 7x plus our constant 8 and our constant 4 can be added together, giving us 12. <coughs> now, let's do subtraction. f minus g of x. So this means we're going to take our f of x equation, so x squared plus 6x plus 8, and we're going to subtract x plus 4. Now going through and combining like terms, we have x squared, 6x minus x becomes a positive 5x, and then 8 minus 4 gives us plus 4. So f of x minus, uh, f minus g of x is x squared plus 5x plus 4. Next, we're going to go through and do f times g of x. So we're going to take our f of x equation, x squared plus 6x plus 8, and multiply that by our g of x, which is x plus 4. And this is just long distribution. So we have x, we're going to multiply every element of our first expression, f of x, with every element of our second expression, g of x, and then combine like terms. So we get x squared times x, which is x cubed, x squared times 4, which is 4x squared. 6x times x, which is 6x squared. 6x times 4, which is 24x. 8 times x, which is just 8x. And then 8 times 4, which is 32. Then, combining like terms, we have x cubed, sorry, cubed, plus 10x squared, plus 32 
x plus 32. And we have, went from a quadratic and a linear up to a cubic equation. Now our last one, f divided by g of x. So f over g of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 8 divided by x plus 4. Now, when you divide, you have to look for common factors. So let's factor our numerator. Numbers that multiply to 8 and add to 6 are 4 and 2. So this becomes x plus 4 times x plus 2. <coughs> and we're dividing that by the quantity of x plus 4. Now, just like with normal numbers, we can factor out an x plus 4 in both numerator and denominator, giving us an end value of x plus 2, with the restriction that x cannot equal negative 4, because that would have made the original equation equal to 0, and we cannot have 0 in our denominator. So there are your four basic functions, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Nothing really new here except that division parts with limiting our domain. Now, moving on, there is one other set of operations that can happen with functions, and that is composition of functions. Composition of functions goes as follows. If you have f composed with g of x. What that means is we take f and we're going to substitute in the value that we get from g of x. And the reverse, if we have g composed with f of x, we get g using f of x as our input values. Now this looks confusing, but an example using numbers, if we had f of x equals 3x and g of x equals x minus 1, and I wanted f composed with g of 5, that means I'm going to first evaluate g of 5. So g of 5 equals 4, because that's 5 minus 1. Then I'm going to do f of 4. 3 times 4 is 12. So I have f of g of 5 equals 12 through that substitution. <coughs> and that works when we're dealing with numbers. But how does it work when we're dealing with the just equations? It goes as such. F composed with G of X will be, we take our F equation, 2X plus 3, and in there we're going to substitute in G, which is X minus 4. So, simplifying this through distribution, we get 2x minus 8 plus 3, which is 2x minus 5. Now, reversing this, if we went g composed with f of x, we get whatever we're going to substitute in, minus 4, and what we're substituting is the f equation, which is 2x plus 3. Now this time we have nothing to distribute, so we get 2x plus 3 minus 4, which is 2x minus 1. Typically, your f of x, or sorry, your f composed with g and your g composed with f of x will not be equivalent. This is not a commutative operation. You cannot change the order and expect to have the same answer. Now let's look at it for m and n. So if I do m composed with n of x, I get 3 times whatever n is plus 1. And n 
was x squared minus 2. So we, distributing, we get 3x squared minus 6 plus 1, which is 3x squared minus 5. Now, n composed with m of x is whatever our m equation is squared minus 2 and our m equation was m equation was 3 sorry about that m equation is 3x plus 1 distributing <coughs> sorry squaring we're going to end up here with 9x squared plus 6x plus 1 minus 2 which is equal to 9x squared plus 6x minus 1. So we get some fairly different answers here as we go through. Now the question is where are we ever going to use this? What type of application is involved? Well good one. Your favorite store is having a season clearance sale where everything is 25% off. You have a 10% off coupon through a customer loyalty program. What is the difference in the final cost of purchasing a $100 item for the different ways that the discounts can be applied? So we need two equations here. We have our sale, which is if things are 25% off, then it's 75% of the original price. And our second equation is the coupon. If we get 10% off the coupon, then we are still paying 90% of the money. So I want to see the difference between doing S composed with C of 100 and C composed with S of 100. Well, S composed with C says I take my 75% and compose that with the 90% of X. Now, 75% of 90% is equal to zero. It's sixty seven, sorry, sixty seven and a half percent of our original cost. Now doing this for a hundred, we get zero six seven five times a hundred, and you end up paying six uh sixty seven dollars and fifty cents before taxes. Now going the other way, doing a the coupon after the sale price, you would have 90% of our 75% sale, which is equal to, multiplying these we get 0 0.675 of x again evaluating that for a hundred dollar purchase you come out with sixty seven dollars and fifty cents before taxes so when you're looking at coupons it doesn't matter if the with percentages it doesn't matter if the coupon is conducted first and then the sale price or the sale price is conducted coupon after that. So this doesn't make a difference but when you look at sale amounts if you had a ten dollar off coupon that can make a difference and we'll explore that together. But composition of functions and function operations take a look at these and see what you can get. Be ready to use them as we move forward in Algebra 2.